I'm Dr Vicky Burns from the School of Sport, Exercise and Rehabilitation Sciences at the University of Birmingham. If you were at the FameLab UK Grand Final, you'll definitely remember me. I'm not boasting, you'll remember me because I was the one who decided to do my performance in a wetsuit. In fact, if you're interested in science communication, you might have heard about me anyway, because I was the one that decided to do my performance in a wetsuit and forgot my words halfway through the talk. I'm making this video because you're probably thinking that this will never happen to you, or that if it did, it would be the worst possible moment of your life. I just want you to know that neither of those things are true. If it can happen to me, it can happen to anybody. I was my senior academic there. I talk for a living. I still forgot what I was going to say. What saved me was that I was well rehearsed, so once I got back on it, I was okay and that I knew my topic really well. So as soon as we got through to the questions, I could answer them confidently and easily with no worries that I'd be caught out by the judges. In terms of it being the worst nightmare, it actually wasn't that bad. FameLab's an incredibly supportive environment and I could genuinely feel the audience willing me to remember my words and carry on. The judges didn't grill me, they just gave me an opportunity to show what I knew and afterwards everybody just reassured me with how well I'd picked it back up. So if any of these things are putting you off entering, I would say just take part, give it a go. And if you mess it up the way I did, then do it again, bigger and better next time. Because that was the worst thing about not being able to do it properly, was I didn't get to do my talk the way it should be. So now I want to show you my FameLab entry how I intended it. A Malaysian scuba diving instructor once told me I couldn't have any lunch because I was too fat for my wetsuit. Yeah, I was pretty depressed. But what if fat really could make you depressed? Understanding how takes us on a journey across our entire approach to science. Because you see, traditionally scientists have been a lot like scuba divers. We dive deeper and deeper into their tiny area of research, finding some interesting things, but not necessarily thinking about how they connect with everything else in the sea of human knowledge. So over here, immunologists were exploring how the immune system uses chemical messages called cytokines to communicate between the different cells. And over here, psychologists had noticed that when we're physically ill, it also changes the way we think, feel, and behave. So how does the brain know we've got an infection? And somewhere else entirely, doctors were wondering why cancer treatments were making some of their patients feel depressed. Could drugs based on cytokines be changing the way we feel? It turns out that cytokines were doing what many scientists weren't. They were communicating across boundaries. These chemical messages intended for other immune cells were actually getting picked up and read by the brain. It's kind of like Facebook and the US government. By working together, scientists figured out that cytokines can communicate via nerves and even travel into the brain themselves to tell us we've got an infection and to make us feel lethargic and craving warmth and comfort food. Now, if you're actually ill, then that's great because it encourages you to temporarily rest and recover. It's less helpful if it's just a chronic side effect of your cytokine-based cancer treatment. But this was a story about fat. Because fat isn't just inert lumps of lard, it's an active tissue that's teeming with immune cells that produce cytokines. Cytokines that make you tired, unmotivated, and in need of chocolate. So it sets up this vicious cycle where fat can make you feel more depressed and in turn, that depression can make you engage in behaviours that are likely to make you fat. Now this doesn't mean we can just abdicate all responsibility for diet and exercise, but it is important that policy makers understand these issues when they're designing public health interventions. Perhaps together we can come up with something more effective than simply telling women in wetsuits they should have eaten less. <laughs>